Greetings all. Now, as I mentioned in on a community post on uh, the channel uh, a few days, a week or two, depending on when I post this video ago, um, I'm wanting to give the channel a getting back to a bit more focus. So my bolt action and of course my beloved Wars of the Roses and other medieval things. Um, the channel's lost focus this year simply because a bit of employment turbulence, a couple of bouts of illness, but also lots of gaming. So what painting I've done has generally been focused towards what I need to grab with me to take onto the table. But I digress. Here we are. Some Wars of the Roses guys. Perry miniatures. We have a, a Billman and a Bowman to form a unit of Bill and Bow. I've also got, excuse the shaky camera, I couldn't find the stand, so I'm just uh, using my hands here. I've also got a unit of Men at Arms that I'm going to be painting, but as you can see, it's primed black, so different technique. I'll do a different video. So here we are, starting stage one. They've been primed with some Citadel Wraith Bone. And here we go, here's stage two. What's uh, what's happened here with stage two is just over the initial um, priming with uh, Wraith Bone, there's been a bit of pre-shading with Agrax Earth Shade. Something I always do. In fact, um, all of this stuff that's in this video, you'll also see similar sort of work on my uh, video regarding painting 100 Years War Archers, which uh, there's a link to that in the description below. But there we go, that's stage two. Coming up next, uh, just doing um, anything metal with lead belcher and leather parts like shoes and belts. Right, here we go, that's stage, uh, the next stage done. Um, I've used lead belcher for metal parts and snake bite leather contrast for any leather parts like boots and belts. Let's just take one to give you an idea. As you can see there. Came together reasonably nicely. That pre-shading with the Agrax Earth shade really looks really well. But yeah, next will be uh, flesh and also wood. So things like the uh, the bow, the bill hook, and uh, anything else that's wood, like um, arrow shafts there, and the flesh parts. And there's the next stage done. The wood on weapons and uh, arrow shafts, etc. has been done with Agaros Dunes contrast, and the flesh with Gilliman flesh contrast. Pick this one up and let you have a look at it a bit closer. Focus, damn you. There you go. All that remains now is to um, apply colours appropriate to uh, the Lord they serve, some livery colours. Uh, quite a few of the sort of generic colour garments that, um, like for example, the padded jacket this fellow's wearing here. Yes, you could colour it, the colour of the Lord um, they serve or work for, whatever you want to call it. Um, but sometimes just leaving it natural colour will help um, or will look more accurate. Um, and the, the uh, undercoating with the wraith bone and the pre-shading with the Agrax Earthshade, um, sometimes just leave it like that or perhaps just put another wash over it to darken it. But anyway, coming up next, livery colours and finishing the model off. And here we are with those two chaps done. All that's been done to them since the previous stage was um, a uh, light coat of Blood Angels Red Contrast in appropriate areas of the clothing in this chap on his sleeve and leg there, and ditto his this chap's sleeve and leg there. And um, areas are going to be white because these chaps are wearing red and white for the colours of Henry Holland, the uh, Duke of Exeter, um, joining his retinue. Um, the areas that are remaining white, as in the opposing sleeve and uh, legs that weren't uh, painted red, have had a slight touch up or highlight of wraith bone out of the pot. Um, the tunic or padded jacket, in the case of the pike, uh, not pikeman, sorry, uh, billman have just been left as they were with the Wraithbone Primer and the um, and the uh, pre-shading applied with Agrax Earthshade. Other than that, all that's been done is a little touch of um, null oil on the metallic parts. Let me uh, pick one of these uh, things up. Let's try and get it in focus. There we are. And, um, and yeah, that's it. Pretty simple, pretty quick. 
gave a coat of agarose dunes to the uh, padded jacket sticking out from under his uh, top there. So yeah, very simple, very quick. The longest stage of the whole thing was actually waiting for the um, pre-shading of Agarot's Earthshade to dry. Now all that remains is to uh, paint the rest of the unit and do some basing. So uh, one second and we'll get back to that. And there they all are. Just need to paint the edges of the base a brown color and then uh, dunk it in um, some base texture. Allow that to dry and apply a few tufts and things. So uh, we'll crack on with that. And there we go, there's the um, three bases. Uh, had their edges painted with Steel Legion Drab from Citadel. And a bit of PVA glue applied and a ground texture mix, mix I should say, <laughs> applied onto the glue. Let that dry and then sort of some static grass and tufts and so on uh, will be added to finish it all off. And there we have it, another regiment or retinue, whatever you want to call them, of household troops for the Duke of Exeter, Henry Holland, in his red and white colours. I'll um, put together a showcase video at some stage in the future, um, breaking the army down into you know the commanders and their retinues. But this is another unit of household troops, like I say, for uh, the Duke of Exeter. There we go. As usual, Perry Models Plastics, lovely models to paint. And uh, there'll be more coming soon. Now I'm back on my uh, Wars of the Roses painting. Um, and a sneak preview. I've got some men at arms coming soon. But anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.